What is up everybody? My name is James from Zaynamis Gaming. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In this video, I will cover the latest in gaming hardware and the latest in gaming releases and updates. So feel free to sit back and relax. You could tend to another task while listening to this video. But for those of you who want to watch, I will have gameplay in the background after the tech related news has passed. I will have timestamps below so you all can jump around to the topic you are most interested in. Now, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my video if you enjoy this content. And please leave me a comment down below if you want me to cover something in the future. I will gladly do so. Now let's jump right into this video. My first topic, I will be going over the Intel Rocket Lake CPUs. The new i9-11900K will feature 8 cores and 16 threads, which is a step down from the 10900K model that featured 10 cores. Now, Obviously, with Intel, you will have to purchase another motherboard. The Z590 chipset remains the only one to offer overclocking for this CPU, though you will be able to run memory at greater than stock speeds on B560 and H570 motherboards. Now, personally, I am not a fanboy by any means. I enjoy Intel's offerings as well as AMD's offerings, but from a financial standpoint, and if you fit into this category, I don't like the fact that you have to purchase another motherboard every three to six months if you want to get Intel's latest and greatest um, CPU or anything of that nature. Now, back to the key features that Intel offers with this new CPU. Now, Intel is claiming that you'll have increased memory speeds up to DDR4-3200, comparable to AMD. You'll also get new integrated PCIe Gen 4, low latency, high bandwidth. Now, Intel is projecting that the onboard graphics will be 50% higher in performance compared to 9th generation integrated graphics. Now, that is projected, so I'm not 100% sure yet. I guess we'll find out more when they release and we can actually do some testing and see what kind of figures it actually performs. Most people are running a graphics card nowadays, so it really doesn't matter in my opinion. I, I don't really care for integrated graphics. It's nice to have, but it's not necessary in my opinion. Now, if you are running integrated graphics, it is a plus to see that you'll have increased display resolutions. Now, also, Intel will have a deep learning boost, which will give you improved AI performance. So to put it as a summary, Intel is trying to close the gap between themselves as a competitor to AMD. With the new Intel chips, you'll have Gen 4 support, and you'll also have DDR4-3200 memory speed support. So that's good to see as well. Now, if you plan to purchase one of these 11th generation Intel CPUs, you will have to buy a 500 series motherboard. And if you plan to overclock, which you will need the K-SKU to overclock, you will have to buy a Z590 chipset motherboard. Now, whether they'll be in stock at that time, depending on release and whatnot, stuff like that, I guess we'll find out in the weeks to come. Hopefully, I'll be able to cover that next week or the following week after that. Please note that these CPUs will not release until March 2021, so I guess time will tell. Now, I wanted to clarify the motherboard situation. I said that Z590 chipset will be the only one available to offer overclocking for the CPU. Now, for the Intel CPU, it states that you will get increased memory speeds up to DDR4-3200 speeds. Now, you will still be able to achieve those memory speeds on a B560 or a H570 motherboard, but if you plan to overclock the CPU itself, you will need a Z590 motherboard. So, I hope that doesn't cause any confusion. If you have any questions regarding that, you can leave them in the comments down below and I will help you out and answer those questions accordingly. Now, before I switch subjects and give you my opinion on the Intel matter, I wanted to leave you a couple of notes. One thing to note is that we're likely looking at a split approach on the desktop with the 11th generation chips. Core i9, i7, and i5 processors are reportedly using the latest Rocket Lake architecture, Cypress Cove, while Core i3, Pentium, and any Celeron chips are going to use Comet Lake, aka Sky Lake. Now, Intel's latest CPU will remain on 14 nanometer technology. As you may know, AMD's latest Ryzen processors are on 7 nanometer technology, but Intel is promising that the IPC gains are upwards of 19%. So, when these release, we'll definitely do some testing to see if that remains true. Now, they are still looking at clock speeds of being upwards of towards 
5.3 gigahertz single core boost with the new Intel CPU, even though it is on a 14 nanometer processor. All core boost sits at 4.8 gigahertz. So like I said before, once we can do some testing, compare some graphs, we'll actually see where it goes. Now ladies and gentlemen, I understand you want the latest and greatest, and that's cool, but I'm more of a price to performance kind of guy. That's why I have been sticking with AMD recently. Now for me personally, I know I have not tested this new Intel CPU, but I can almost assure you that this new Intel CPU will not be worth the extra $600 it takes for you to get it into your system. And that's best case scenario. If scalpers get a hold of it, it could cost you more money. Now for me, this CPU is simply just not worth it. Now, if you're really far behind in technology and you're on an i5-6600K or something of that nature, then by all means, definitely go out and buy it. I'm sure it'll be worth the money. You'll be getting a huge performance upgrade compared to what you had previously. And on top of that, you can't beat eight cores at 4.8 gigahertz. Now on the downside, if you're a content creator, these CPUs will more than likely not outdo AMD's current CPUs. AMD is just top dog when it comes to productivity. That's why if you're a content creator or a heavy streamer, I highly recommend just using an AMD Ryzen processor. Now currently I am running an AMD CPU and it's been amazing for me with my content creation as well as gaming. I haven't had any hiccups with it. Now for me overall, AMD is just a better overall CPU. I have had Intel in the past, but Intel really only excels for me inside of gaming. Now, I don't want to judge it too early. Once the 11th generation CPUs release, I'll definitely try to get my hands on one and review it for you guys. Now, at this time, I would like to shift gears and move to GPUs and consoles. I know some of you out there are hunting graphics cards, as well as some of you out there that are hunting the new PlayStation 5, as well as the Xbox. I just wanted to give you an update on the market. Now, in regards to GPUs, now, according to NVIDIA and AMD, the graphics card shortage could last for at least another three months, and they're blaming it on the lack of GDDR6 memory. Now, this is just unfortunate news. I know a lot of you that have been hunting down GPUs, in particular since NVIDIA launched the 3000 series cards in September, you've just been having to wait and pay ridiculous prices, and that sucks. It sucks for everyone but it's just a sad reality that we live in. Now, most of you may know, well, I'm sure everyone knows, since the pandemic started, a lot of people have gravitated towards gaming and content creation. So unfortunately, if you're trying to get a GPU, you will either have to wait at least another three months or spend 50% over what they're actually worth and buy one from a scalper. You could also maybe possibly find deals on eBay but I can almost guarantee you that you will not find a 3000 series card relatively cheap. You'll be looking at maybe a 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti, best case scenario. But as of right now, even particularly on eBay, a 1660 Ti is roughly $800. It's just ridiculous. So in my honest opinion, I would hold on to what you got for now. If you come across a great outstanding deal, go for it. Or if you find a GPU at Micro Center, pick it up. I don't care what you got to do to get it. Just get it. If you cannot do that, then you'll have to wait at least another three months for the market to level out and for you to actually be able to go out and just purchase one outright. Now, in regards to PlayStation 5 and Xbox, AMD is expecting that the PS5, Xbox, and PC chip shortages will continue through the first half of 2021. So that's definitely unexpected. You may not be able to get your hands on a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or anything like that until July of 2021. Now, as you may know on the Facebook Marketplace and eBay, places like that, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are going for between $1,000 and $1,100 as of right now for the people that bought more than one. Now, you could go that route and purchase one from one of those people that are selling it for an astronomical amount. It's up to you, really. It just depends on how bad you want one and if you got the extra money. Now, if you don't want to wait, unfortunately, you will have to wait somewhere around summertime they're predicting july of 2021 i don't think it will take that long but hey you never know i know with the pandemic it has put a lot of shortages it's closed a lot of places so you never really know until the time actually comes now moving on i want to jump into actual stocks now this is related to game news but 
I don't really want to get into politics on this channel, but since it's related to GameStop, I figured I would let you guys know. Now, unless you've been living under a rock the past few days, GameStop has outstandingly surged in the stock market. Now, apparently GameStop is actually supposed to be filing for bankruptcy, but as of right now, they have jumped more than 200% in the last week. Now, they are definitely overvalued. I remember last week they were about $40 a share and everybody was kind of hyping it up, especially on Reddit. I can leave a link down below for the stock market and Reddit, just in case any of you guys are interested. Um, but in Reddit, everyone made a post saying, oh, what stock are we gonna jump into? Everybody just gravitated towards GameStop for some ungodly reason. Now, if you were one of those people that had a share in GameStop or 100 shares or something like that, you have just had a major payday. Now, it is truly remarkable. As you can see, GameStop went up to $420 the last that I checked, and it is truly remarkable. Now, I believe it hyped up even more because a lot of streamers and a lot of people that I follow, including Elon Musk, tweeted about GameStop, I believe it was yesterday. So that made the market grow even more. If you're not following Elon Musk on Twitter, you should definitely follow him. Whatever he tweets about, usually that stock ends up skyrocketing just because of Elon Musk. Now, the last time I checked, now as of 11.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the stock actually went down 40%. Right now, at that particular time, it was at 207.90. Now, throughout a 52-week range, the lowest point that the stock has reached is $2.57 a share. The highest, which was yesterday, was $482.85. So if you have about 10 shares in there, you have made substantial amount of money if you purchase them at that lower point. If you sell each share at $200, you made a, a quick cash grab. You can go out and buy one of those scalp GPUs that I just talked about. Now, the hype was so big that President Biden actually put out an investigation towards the stock market to look into the GameStop stock. So it has definitely made national news. Now, some key people, a few celebrities and whatnot, have tweeted regarding this issue within the stock market. Alexandria Cortez actually stated she said gotta admit it's really something to see wall streeters with a long history of treating our economy as a casino complain about a message board of posters also treating the market as a casino and she's basically referring to the post that i've stated earlier regarding reddit when pretty much millions of people just came together and said hey we're going to invest in gamestop so if you guys out there you have shares in gamestop it looks like it's just going to fall now completely on its face i would definitely try to hurry up and sell those before it goes down even further you could make a lot of money doing so now this is a rare occasion i will not cover news or political um, issues in my channel but since this is since this excuse me since this is related more to gaming i figured i would just throw it out there so if you guys have gamestop stocks sell them now because you'll make a good chunk of money now moving on Right now, I'm going to get into Call of Duty. Call of Duty has released its new trailer for its upcoming season. I'm going to play it in the background. You guys may have seen it if you play Call of Duty already. So please enjoy. I'm going to shut the hell up. You guys watch it and check it out for yourself. Nadler has some pieces of the puzzle. But doesn't know he's a piece himself. He won't live long enough to work that out. I won't show him mercy he showed me. I was in charge of the production of Nova 6 on Rebirth Island. I answered to Colonel Kravchenko himself. I was loyal, my star ascendant, until the Americans found us. That's when I met Russell Adler. He could not break me. Tell your boss, this is for Weaver. For letting Reaper fall, Kravchenko sent me to Gulag, where I found my true calling. He's trying to bait you, Adler. No shit. But if we don't stop him, civilians are gonna die. 
Do it. What the hell? He's manufacturing Nova 6 again. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below on what you think of that trailer. Now, I enjoy Call of Duty just as much as Destiny 2. I just prefer Destiny 2 a little bit more, mainly because I'm better at Destiny 2 than Call of Duty. But I digress. Now, coming today, January 28th, the popular 3 vs 3 gunfight playlist returns in Black Ops Cold War. 3 vs 3 gunfight snipers only is exactly what it sounds like. Two teams of three face off with randomized sniper, loadouts, and the first team to six rounds wins the match. Maps include Game Show, ICBM, KGB, and U-Ball. And don't forget all the fan favorite playlists like Nuketown 24-7, Face Off, Prop Hunt, and more continue throughout this season. Also, two deadly bundles, each with their own unique themes, will be available this week. First is Tracer Pack Rogue, a spider themed bundle for Warsaw Pack's Port Nova, along with her masked up Shadow Operator skin. There are two legendary weapons with red tracer dots, the Widowmaker SMG and Entanglement Tactical Rifle, as well as a rare Lady in Red charm and Widow's Grasp emblem. Now the bundle is available in store on January 28, 2021. Next up is the Deadly Grip for NATO Sims, which has two legendary blueprints, Mahogany, a Milano 821 configured with a drum barrel for extra ammo, and Chestnut, a Howard 77 setup destined to end fights quickly. Along with Sims, Streetwise Convert, Operator Skin, the bundle also includes two epic stickers, a glowing Lionheart legendary emblem, a slicing shortcut finishing move, and more. Get this bundle in store starting January 31st, 2021. The next Black Ops Cold War Zombies map, Firebase Z, will be free to all players to download. I personally really enjoy what Call of Duty is doing for their community. I think it's fantastic. It really shows you what multiplayer games can accomplish. I wish Bungie would implement some of these tactics inside of Destiny 2. I think it would work out in their favor. But now we're going to move on to Rockstar Games. I know a lot of you have been anticipating GTA 6 as well as I have some slight news regarding Red Dead Redemption 2. But first, I want to cover GTA 6. Now, a lot of people are speculating that GTA 6 will be announced during the Super Bowl. As you may know, the Super Bowl is iconic. Some people don't even like football. They just watch the Super Bowl for the halftime show and the commercials. Now, for the most part, Grand Theft Auto is still making money for Rockstar. You know, Grand Theft Auto 5. So, if it does not happen, they don't announce this game. I'm not really sure when it will be announced. But most people are speculating, like I said, that it will be announced during the Super Bowl. Now, Rockstar has released a small update this week in regards to Red Dead Redemption 2 Online. Now, it states, Intrepid producers who craft any item at a campfire will receive three collectibles to trade with Madame Nazar. Meanwhile, crafting anything in the Gus store this week will bag you a reward for a free hat below rank 15 and an offer good for 50% off any pair of boots. Purchasing any pamphlet will also land you a treasure map that will surely lead you to a valuable haul. Now they're also, right now, they also have a 40% discount on clothing at the Gus store. While Dog Game Hunters can also take 30% off the cost of Gus trinkets and improved bow variants. And they state, jump in to play Red Dead Online between now and February 1st and you will be rewarded with 5 gun oils and 50 small game arrows to help you out in the wilds. Now if you currently have an Amazon Prime membership, you have access to Prime Gaming benefits. Now, Red Dead Online players who connect their Rockstar Games Social Club account to Prime Gaming will receive rewards for a free Bounty Hunter license and award for trimmed Amnesty Bounty Wagon livery. In addition, players who connect to Prime Gaming before February 15th will receive offers for half off the Lamont 
revolver, and a poncho of their choice. An offer for a free offhand holster plus 100 rounds each of high velocity and explosive revolver cartridges. So if you have an Amazon account and you play Red Dead, you might as well just hook up your account, log in, and gain the free rewards that they offer you. Now at this time, I will want to move over to a new upcoming release called Bio Mutant. Now this game has been making headlines for the past year or so, and apparently Bio Mutant is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on May 25th of this year. Now it stays here. Finally, we have a date for the third person mutant master where you can get to play a gene splicing martial arts master in this open world action RPG. Now, I really I'm excited about this game. I can't wait to play it. The game is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at these screenshots. I think it would actually look a lot better on the newer consoles. But since there's a shortage with those consoles, um, obviously they're not going to release it on those particular consoles and bio mutant basically has branching storylines so whatever decision you make as a player that will decide how the story continues the world of bio mutant is struck by a natural disaster as a poisonous oil comes up from beneath the surface and pollutes the tree of life now it says here the tree of life has five roots through which it gives life to the whole world in order to save the tree of life, players need to go to the end of each root where aside from the oil, a creature is destroying the root by gnawing at it. There are also six tribes that are split from their original enclave. Now there will be a karma system in place where each tribe can be influenced so you can alter their actions on how they're going to save the tree of life. Now bio mutant is sort of similar to like fallout i like to compare it to something like that because you worked with separate factions and the way you played is how the story will be told now over the course of your adventure you can unlock all kinds of traversal and combat options as you explore craft new gear and more one interesting note about this news is that there is no mention of current gen playstation 5 or xbox series version but that doesn't mean that one won't be available now when the new generation PlayStation 5 and the Xbox become more readily available, I'm sure you'll hear an announcement regarding Biomutant being available for this current console. But as of right now, it is only going to be available for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So in short, on May 25th, 2021, make sure you go out and grab this game. Now I want to shift gears and move to Star Wars. Apparently, a new Star Wars game, Knights of the Old Republic, is reportedly in the works and is not being developed by EA or BioWare, the studio behind the original game. Many fans have always wondered when another Knights of the Old Republic would release. It was one of the best licensed role-playing games ever made. The last one to come out was in 2004. Apparently, a bounty hunter related game may also be in the works from EA. EA is currently working on something, but we do not have confirmation on what it is as of now. Many fans have speculated that the title in question is indeed Battlefront 3 since EA made Battlefront 2 free on Epic Game Store and two key actors were working on a new secret project. I guess only time will tell in that regard. Also, if you guys don't have Battlefront 2, Right now, it is free on Epic Games Store, and I highly suggest you pick it up. You don't have to pay to win, everything is unlocked, you get to use every hero in the game, and it is up to date with, I believe, um, The Rise of Skywalker, which was episode 9. So definitely pick this one up, it's free, why not? You get a free game, you can try it out and play it. And usually when EA releases a game for free, that normally means that they're up to something or they're working on something. And I think they learn from past experience, especially from the first battle, uh, Battlefront, that hiding microtransactions behind a paywall just isn't going to make it and it's not going to keep your player base around. So I think they've learned from that. Now I'm going to shift gears slightly and move towards Destiny 2. Now in regards to Destiny 2, I have the complete TWAB in another video the 12 from last week so if you want you guys can check that out i will leave a link down below in the description it talks about everything the prismatic recastery coming um umbral ingrams everything like that now the new twab that comes out today won't be out until around 4 to 5 p.m this afternoon and this gaming news video will already have published on youtube so if you're looking for that give me some time i will have that out as well now 
This week, you can expect double loot from the Nightfall ordeal. Apparently, Marasov may return in the future, and we also may work with Kapal based off of leaked photo that we have seen previously where Zavala is standing around and looking at the Crux of Darkness with other Kabal. So, Season of the Chosen basically begins in about 12 days. We should get more information in regards to Season of the Chosen today in today's TWAB or in next week's TWAB. Also, I want to let you guys know, don't forget to turn in all of your vendor tokens before Season of the Chosen begins. They will be deleted next season. So if you have thousands of Crucible tokens, Vanguard tokens, or anything like that, if you do not turn them in, they will be deleted. I know it takes a long time, but I promise you, you'll get thousands of Legendary Shards. You'll also get a number of Enhancement Cores. So it's definitely worth it to take the time out and turn them in. I'll also leave a link down below of when I turned in all my Crucible tokens. I turned in about 13,000 of them. I roughly got 190 enhancement cores and I got about 2,000 to 2,200 legendary shards. So it's definitely worth it. Please don't forget to do it. Please don't forget to do it. Because as you may know, if you watch that video, that also has TWAB news related to it. And we will be going to a different ranking system come season of the chosen. Now, you guys, I want to shift and go to Cyberpunk 2077. Now, today, Hotfix 1.11 is now available on PC, consoles, and Stadia. This update restores item randomization and fixes a bug which affected some users' holocaust and Takamura and Down on the Street quest. Now, also, I wanted to let you guys know that earlier this week, Cyberpunk released the first set of official modding tools for the game. But beware, CD Projekt Red had to make its first mod ban this week. Following a fan mod that allowed players to have sex with Reeves' character, Johnny Silverhand. Now, CD Projekt Red has also reached out. They basically stated that, For the characters we've invented for the game, we broadly permit you to tweak the game at will and just have fun. CD Projekt Red told PC Gamer, When it comes to models of real people whom we've asked to participate in the game, aka Kenyanu Reeves, we kindly ask you to refrain from using them in any situation that might be offensive if you don't have their explicit permission. So basically, a fan made a mod in regards to Keanu Reeves, and under CD Projekt Red standard, that is not allowed. You can do anything you want in the game, but you cannot sexualize or produce ill manner content towards real world people that can be deemed offensive without getting their um, explicit permission to do so. So please don't do any of that stuff. I'm not sure if there'll be any um, actions or any type of lawsuits in regards to that if people keep doing it but i just wouldn't do it anyways now in regards to cyberpunk i'm going to shift a little towards tesla in regards to tesla i know you may be wondering why does that matter well elon musk tweeted out that his brand new tesla model s the plaid model s is ships next month elon musk says that it can play cyberpunk I'm not sure if he could play other games. He hasn't really said that. I guess Elon Musk is just a fan of cyberpunk in general. So if you plan on buying a Tesla, you can take a look at the screenshot that I have before you. Um, you will be able to play games on it. So you could play, I guess you could play cyberpunk while you're driving. I guess the car will just drive you around and you could just play cyberpunk all you want. Um, you could be a DoorDash delivery guy and just play cyberpunk and let the car just drive you where you need to go. So. I guess that's convenient. You can make money and deliver food or just do whatever you want. You're not paying for gas. You're being chauffeured around playing cyberpunk. Um, maybe in the future you'll be able to play, you know, different games. I don't know. Maybe Destiny 2. I'm not really sure what the requirements are. I'm just going based off what Elon Musk stated. So that's that. Now that will do it for my first gaming weekly news video. I want to thank you all for coming and watching. If there's anything that you guys want me to cover, please let me know in the comments down below. I will be glad to do so. I plan to do a video like this once a week. So please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. That way you stay up to date on all of the latest hardware and gaming news. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.